Uh, Howard Stern has a new book out, kind of a book I think that sort of, I guess, reflects his new, basically on satellite radio, the guy's sort of reinventing himself. He's gone from sort of like a, I guess kind of like a 80s and 90s shock jock to like a, almost like a earthy Terry Gross. Incredible. He really is. Like, guy is an amazing interviewer. That's so weird. I mean, I think he's, I've, I'm a big Howard Stern fan from everything. I, I think he's funny and I like all the old stuff. I sometimes will go on a binge where I'll listen to like 90s Howard oh, yeah. Stern. You like listening to him uh, beg to see women's tits for half an hour? That's fun for you? Uh, yeah, sure. It's nostalgia. If that helps the bit. Um, no, that actually isn't most of what that content is. I like, like, him, like, bothering jackie the joke man about his various career schemes as an example so uh and i also my favorite thing and i and i am someone who should not be laughing at this but his station manager tom chiasano sent a company-wide memo and it had a lot of grammar errors in it so <laughs> howard had a second grade school teacher from long island named mrs d'agostino i think her name was come into studio and grade the paper on air while he terrorized the station gm and that is one of the funniest things i've ever heard in my life and that like holds up from the 90s that's like something sam would do that is exactly like well where do you think sam gets ideas <laughs> like this from it's not like Sam was listening to those, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to Howard as well. Um, uh, but anyways, there was actually something relevant uh, that happened to Stern, I guess, politically back in like 2003, 2004, where the FCC was definitely fining him in a way that was specifically targeted to him. And it did have free speech implications. And it also was in a context of total vertical integration of the media landscape. And at that point, it was radio uh, under the dominance of Clear Channel, which incidentally was also like incredibly xenophobic, pro-war, pro-Bush. They weren't playing the Dixie Chicks because the Dixie Chicks had some mild criticism of George W. Bush. I mean, as Sam says, it truly was. It, it's, it now is so crazy, of course. But there is an alternative, there is an ecosystem that's accessible where you can share a community. Whereas like people really do. I mean, back then going and reading like the blogosphere to get the alternative perspective was really people who were just like, yeah, I'm a Democrat. I don't want to cut social security. I don't think that we should just sort of like torture and murder people in the Middle East. So, uh, but Stern was fine steadily and those fines did increase as in that point you know not radically but he became an outspoken supporter basically of democratic candidates and of john Kerry and against george w bush and bernie sanders plays into this so we got a couple a little bit of a a, a clip and then we're gonna go in a trip down memory lane but here is howard stern on stephen colbert uh explaining his uh giving a sense of his history with bernie and then we have a throwback clip i think from 2004 2005 of Sanders on Howard's show. Here is Stephen Colbert with Howard Stern from last night. So who would you be excited to have on? Oh, gee, I, I don't know. That, that's Joe Biden. Uh, sure, why not? Because Joe Biden's had a fascinating life. Sure. And I think it would be interesting. Bernie. I mean, <clears throat> Bernie Sanders, for sure. You know, Bernie Sanders is probably my biggest hero for one reason. And this is very self-serving. When the FCC was attacking me and they were attempting to take me off the air and, and in a big way, it was almost like racketeering. They kept finding our stations. They kept mm -hmm. keeping us from buying other radio stations. Bernie Sanders got up in the Senate and said, I think what you're doing to Howard Stern is wrong. I believe in freedom of speech and I want to go on record as saying you got to stop it. And it was pretty damn impressive. And I'll tell you, I was under siege at that point. I really was, and I thought it might be the end of my career. And what year are we talking about here? Oh, geez. I, I, I don't even remember when he did it. I, I would have 1963? <laughs> no, 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 a little later than little, that. Little, little, Probably little, in yeah. the 90s, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So he really doesn't remember. So this is actually 2005, and this is a clip. And this is great because I do love, and again, I am a Howard Stern fan, but I do love the collision in this clip of... You know, and fair enough, I totally, yeah, like no one wants their career under siege, absolutely. But I do love like Howard's fairly specific focus and Bernie's broader focus. Check this out. 
government doesn't need to do a thing. You can do it yourself. Congressman Bernie Sanders from Vermont, I don't mean to sound paranoid, but ever since I announced my satellite deal, I am now seeing the focus going to satellite radio as opposed to terrestrial radio. Am I the target of every politician? No, I don't think you're the target. I think there's an effort on the part of the extreme right-wingers <laughs> and people who think that because they don't like something, nobody in America should be able to hear it and see it. It's not just you. You're the, guys... only, you're the only congressman that I know. I'm going to tell you about this guy right here on the phone, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> he proposed a bill to prevent the government from censoring the content of cable TV shows and Internet websites. Yeah, I read about this yesterday. Yep. His uh, bill was in response to the recently approved House legislation increasing the FCC and decency fines. Which and it's in response to exactly what you talked about. It seems to me, A, it's unconstitutional. <laughs> the government does not have a right to get into cable. And number two, if people are paying for what they want to see, they have a right to see it. And How many... what all of this is about, Howard, is moving us to a less free society in many respects cutting out different points of view. If people don't like your program, anybody else's program, you know what they could do? They could turn it off. I just read about a <laughs> religious broadcaster that was fired this week because he went on and said, uh, someone asked him, do you think the Pope will go to heaven? It was a theoretical discussion. And the guy said something about how only born-again Christians can go to heaven. You know, whatever his opinion Whatever was. his belief is. Right. He was fired for that. That's right. Now, now if you, and then the guy even said yeah, that the district goes, gee, I, I never did anything like Howard Stern. Why are they firing me? Because it doesn't stop with me. They're going to censor Tony Soprano. They're going That's to censor exactly what they're going to do. Let me tell you what they're already doing. I don't know if you know this. You've seen the film Saving Private Ryan, right? Yeah. Right. Fantastic film. Right. ABC showed it <laughs> nationally on uh, Veterans Day. 60 ABC affiliates refused to put it on the air because they were afraid they were going to be fined. 6-0. Six, 6-0 zero. Six, zero because obviously in the middle of a war in the film, soldiers use profanity. The PBS could not recently put it, a film distributed because in the middle of the war in Iraq, bombs are going off. Soldiers use profanity. They had to censor that. Well, here's the, key, here's the key question. How many of your fellow uh, congressmen who I'm actually losing respect for. How many of your fellow congressmen are going to support your bill? Now, so far, we've got about 10 on the bill. It's H.R. 1440. But I think when the American people learn what's going on and the fact that the Sopranos and every other show that they like on cable could be censored, then more and more people will be supporting this bill. But we need the help of the American people. This was a big. This was a really big deal at the time, and they were absolutely right. And I, I totally agree with him. But I, I love. I mean, but even just the consistency in terms of like, from the big argument today about reclaiming America from the oligarchy back to like, look, if you want to listen to Howard make a, a total prick of himself, that should be your right. And I think if people wake up, they demand. A lot of consistency. Can we to fast it. forward to the part where Bernie rides the Sibian? <laughs> I remember I was driving to Burlington. Jenny Wait. McCarthy had promised to ride the Sibian for the last three appearances. She hadn't done it. All of a sudden, I thought it was about to finally happen. Then it goes silent because they decide what I can and cannot hear. <laughs> so, in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, Baba Bowie, Baba Bowie, how it started as the king of all media. <laughs> we love you, Robin. <laughs> uh, 